Thank you. Well, good morning. Things can change pretty fast in life, can't they? I'll give you a humorous example from my high school days. My high school was known for its wrestling and not for its football. In fact, as a senior, I had never been to a winning game of football. And then uh, at homecoming, we found ourselves in this unusual position where it looked like we were going to win our homecoming game. Now, I played, uh, I played the trumpet in the band, and uh, we, pl the, we played at the university's uh, stadium, so it was quite a large astroturf, big lights and all that, and we were so excited, but because I had never been to a winning game, uh, well, the band hadn't either. Anytime they won, it was away or whatever, and so um, the band director got all excited and says, you know, the school has this history. If we win a game, you turn your hats around back, and we go to the end zone, and we play the school song. So there's two minutes left in the game. We were ahead by about three points, and it looked like we were actually going to win. So they marched us all down, and we got behind the end zone, and we're, we turn our hats around. There were, by the time they got us lined up, there was nine seconds left on the clock. Our guys had it on the 10-yard line, and they were coming towards us. So they had 10 yards, 9 seconds. All they had to do was fall down, you know, grab the ball, run out the 9 seconds. Instead, I'll never forget, there was the quick snap. Quarterback took one step back, threw it right into the numbers of an opponent. The opponent somehow managed to make it those 90 yards in 9 seconds. We were stunned. Nobody could, the whole place was just silent. We had lost the game in nine seconds when it was ours to lose. It was like, oh my goodness, how did we do that? Other times, change comes slowly. Think of Mary and babies. Nine months rather than nine seconds. Paul wrote, but when the, when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. God waited for just the right time to send Jesus into this world. He waited to bring change at just the right moment. And Jesus is God's ultimate change agent, like a chemical reaction. You know, if you ever worked with epoxy, you know, you add the second element and then it just hardens up really fast. In an instant, Jesus can change the most sin-darkened heart into that of a heart of purity and light. We're going through the book of Isaiah, and my approach is simply to look at the golden passages, the great passages in the book. It is not an easy book to preach from. I appreciate your patience with me. But allow God's Word to just kind of ruminate in your heart and uh, let it grow and inspire you. There are about 30 prophecies of the coming Messiah in the book of Isaiah. We don't have time to look at them all today. Here's just three quick examples. He'll have his way prepared. John the Baptist, he'll be exalted. Jesus was exalted. He will judge the earth, and Jesus is given authority to judge. Um, but today we will see four specific prophecies about Jesus, the, the Son who has been given to you and me. Let's do a quick review to catch everyone up. The book uh, is probably 2,000 years old, and it's, it's very important for us today. It is the most quoted prophet in the, in the New Testament. It stands between the Old Testament sacrificial system and the New Testament uh, salvation by faith alone. It's a collection of poems, prophecies, histories, and sermons. And, uh, and Isaiah saw three, three futures Three different time periods. He saw that what was going to happen in his immediate future. He then foresaw the, uh, the Assyrian and Babylonian captivity, the exile period. Then he also saw the return of Israel to the promised land. So it's quite a remarkable book. Well, let's just jump right into this. And the very first point is the son of a virgin. Uh, before, Israel con before Assyria conquered Israel... Isaiah prophesied to the king of Judah to not worry. King Ahaz was worried that, that Israel, the kingdom to the north, and Samaria to the south, that, that they were going to attack and overrun Judah. Uh, king Ahaz did not believe Isaiah. Ahaz pleaded with him, put your trust in God, don't trust anybody else. But 
King Ahaz did not listen to Isaiah and instead sent tribute to Assyria, the biggest enemy on the planet. But he's like, I'll send money to them in exchange for their protection of me and, Is uh, and Judah from Israel and Samaria. In the power of the Holy Spirit, Isaiah said to King Ahaz, Ask the Lord your God for a sign of confirmation, Ahaz. Make it as difficult as you want, as high as the heaven or as deep as the place of the dead. But the king refused. Nope, nope, I will not test the Lord like that. God is pulling out all the stops trying to get this king of Judah to trust him. Trust me, don't trust Assyria, don't trust Egypt. I will protect you. But instead, King Ahaz sends money to Assyria. Isaiah replies, oh, that little line there. I will not test the Lord like that. Ahaz knew. He's quoting the Old Testament, you know, you shouldn't put the Lord to a, a test. But he was just, what we would say today, he was virtue signaling. He was, he was signaling this so that he would cover up his own unbelief that God would actually protect Judah. Isaiah replies, then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David, is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Now I bet you never heard the context of that passage before, right? Now you know. King Isaiah, or excuse me, Prophet Isaiah is, is trying to get Ahaz to believe in God. Ask him for a sign. He'll give you a sign. He's pleading, put your trust in God. And Ahaz, no, 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 I, 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 can't, I don't want to trust. I don't want to, I don't want to put God to a foolish test. When in fact, he was, he was like putting on a mask of virtue, saying, no, I'm, 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 I'm not going to do that. But in, it was underneath the mask was unbelief and doubt and the, the, I'm going to do it my way. Now, this passage has deep implications for the Messiah. It is God with us. That's what Emmanuel means, God with us. And that name alone was to inspire King Ahaz that God is going to take care of, of Judah. He is with us. He's not going to abandon us. Now, up until this time, the temple was where God's presence was located. So this is a radical idea that God is no longer going to be limited to the walls of the temple. God, remarkably, is going to come to earth and, and live on earth. He's going to have a human mother, but no human origin. It's just like, there's so many questions. How was God going to really live among his people? Now, you and I, we can look back and we now know his spirit is with us. Now, babies are born all the time, so why not a more remarkable sign? But this is the sign that Isaiah foresaw. And God does give his people signs at significant points in our life. I look back over my shoulder and I, I can see where God put up little fences to keep me from going astray, little signs here and there. And he does the same for you as well. He guides us and he confirms our path and he encourages us. In this prophecy, God is entering human history in a quiet but special way. God himself was coming to earth. Jesus said, if you really know me, you will know my Father as well. Well, I'm going to give you, like I said, four different specific prophecies. The first one is the Messiah will be born of a virgin. And of course, you know that uh, we celebrate Jesus' birth uh, to Mary there at Christmas time. Another prophecy further describes... The, the role of this Messiah. A son is given. Isaiah 9 says this, There will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You and I were once in darkness. Our sinful, selfish ways did not please God. We were, in fact, darkness itself. Paul wrote it like this, For you were once darkness. Notice he doesn't say you were in darkness. He says, You were once darkness, but now you are light. Our evil hearts make the world an evil, a dark place, but light has suddenly dawned on you and me. Because of the birth of this child, you and I have the opportunity to become light. Isaiah's passage continues. 
For to us a child is born, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and holding, upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. So again, a second time we hear of a birth of a son is highly significant. This son will honor Galilee, this backwater area of Israel, and he will sit on David's throne. But this is no ordinary human-born king. He will turn darkness to light, distress to peace. He turns gloom into joy. And he, his reign will continue on forever. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. This is a contrast between short-sighted Ahaz who in trying to defend his country actually plunges it into more desperate circumstances versus a special child who is born and brings peace to the world forever. King Ahaz trusted Assyria. Don't we try to do things on our own like that too? We try to work out all the problems in our life with our own strength, our own intellect. Normally nations use strength against might against might. I mean, you've, we've all seen the, the drone footages of uh, the Ukrainian drones uh, targeting a, a Russian tank. Steel meets steel, handheld weapons. That's how we fight wars, right? Strength meets strength and power meets power, but God is so strong. The very fact he comes into this world, even as an infant, it turns darkness to light and there is a victory that is assured. There's a proverb that states, when the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. Isn't that true? Imagine people living under dictators or authoritarian regimes. They groan for lack of freedom and opportunity. And Jesus coming into this world, God himself coming into this world, changes the opportunity and the freedom that you and I have. Verse 6, for to us a child is born, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. Deliverance does not come from air superiority, boots on the ground, nuclear weapons, or, or better narrative on social media. It comes from a child. This is a spiritual war that you and I are engaged in. Paul wrote, for although we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. Again, this is no ordinary prince because he is God with us. He is uniquely human and understands our weaknesses, and yet he is God himself who is able to save. Look at his titles, Wonderful Counselor. That, he can work signs and wonders, and he gives good advice. The, the, you know the saying, knowledge is power? This child, this Messiah, draws on God's infinite understanding. Often, wi often Wisdom seems strange to us, like, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for me will find it. But that's the wisdom of God, where everything sometimes seems topsy-turvy from our perspective. Another title, he's the mighty God. This means he's a powerful warrior, a hero who easily defeats his enemy. Imagine, imagine the warrior general in the book of Revelation who sits on a white horse, his eyes are like blazing fire and he wears many crowns and the armies of heaven follow him. And out of his mouth is a, rush, is a flaming sword. We serve a mighty God who is able to defeat all our enemies. Everlasting Father. These titles mingle natural and supernatural abilities. Now a father, we all understand a, a father. It's a very common term, a very easy concept. But an everlasting father means he watches over you and me forever. He cares for us. He guides us. He provides for us forever. Not just now, but into the future and forever. Now before we look at the last title, I want you to remember that the prophet, when he gets a vision, he gets it all like in a flash and he sees it like mountain peaks all stacked up there at once. He's not concerned about chronology. You, you and I as Americans, we like things nice in chronological order. This precedes that, that follows this, etc. 
But the prophet, he just gets the vision in a flash. Prince of Peace. Now this title refers to two historical time periods. Jesus is the Prince of Peace who brings peace for you and me between us and God. By what he did on, on the cross, we're going to celebrate it Friday night with the, the walk-through experience. We're going to see that, that mighty work of God to bring salvation and bring peace to you and me. But Jesus is also bringing peace to the entire world. He has a plan to usher in a new heaven and a new earth. Isaiah 65 says, See, I will create a new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. Hallelujah. God is in control of history, and He is moving it towards its climax. We can add a few more prophecies to our list. He will minister in Galilee. Jesus' ministry began in Galilee. He will be heir to David's throne, and he received authority to rule. There's one more passage I'd like to read this morning. It's Isaiah's passage about the Messiah as the ruler. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to read you the first couple verses here. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot. Now, we've seen that picture before. We've seen that picture before where like... Israel has been cut down like a tree because of their, their sinfulness. So God has punished them. But out of that stump will come a, a, a shoot. That shoot is, is Jesus. Yes, a new branch bearing, much, bearing fruit from the old root. And the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, and the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Last week we saw that Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah sees both Jesus' ministry here on earth and into the future. Now this is the text that introduces a wonderful section. If you, I encourage you to go home and, and read Isaiah chapter 11. It's a remarkable vision of the future where a child plays by, plays by, the, by the hole of a cobra. Yeah, right, moms. You're going to let your kid play near a cobra's hole. Or, or the lion lays down with the lamb. It's this remarkable picture of what it's going to be like when there is genuine peace on the world. And we're headed towards that. So now we can add the last one of the four. Jesus will the Messiah will have the Holy Spirit, and of course, Jesus, the, uh, the Spirit descended on Jesus at his, his baptism. You and I can have confidence that Jesus is the Messiah that he, he can save us from our sins. Like I said, there's about 30 prophecies in the book of Isaiah. We don't have time to go through them. But those prophecies coupled with the changed lives just in this room, those who have met Jesus and can say, he changed my life in an instant. Right now, Jesus is at the edge of heaven, just waiting, just waiting for his father to say, now, go get him. This world is filled with sickness and pain and death, but it will be recreated into a new heaven and a new earth. You and I will be recreated and can change from darkness to light in a second. All we must do is trust Jesus. As Isaiah wrote, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Right now, you and I live between the darkness and the full light. It's like Jesus' coming caused the dawn to break, but it's just cracking the, 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 the horizon. Things are now changing, and someday soon, Jesus will return and complete what he began. John wrote, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. We will be changed, friends. We will be like Jesus, for we will see him as he is. Now you can begin that change right now today. Put your trust in him. Nine seconds, nine months, 900 years, it doesn't matter. You can change right now and become more like Jesus. Connie and I, we had the uh, privilege of attending the Szechuan Opera when we lived there. And <clears throat> this is a... a a picture from it, that's not my picture. Those masks that they are wearing, well, first of all, it, it's a, even though we didn't speak Chinese, we could follow the plot. It was clear enough to follow the plot. 
The music, you know, it was, well, uh, kind of like, well, I better not describe it. It's, it's, it the music I, I'll take a pass on in the future. Um, but it was a remarkable visual display. Now, the Szechuan Opera is famous for these masks that these actors wear. By merely flicking his face, or her face, they can change the mask. And scientists have studied it from afar. It's kind of like a deeply held secret among the, the actor's troupe there in, in Szechuan. Uh, the, without touching his face, the actor can change the mask somehow. Nobody knows. And it can change up to ten times in one production. So, you know, the Japanese are there with their high-speed cameras and they're trying to figure it out and all that. So it's quite remarkable. Here's my point. You and I, we all wear masks, don't we? We try to hide things from God. We, we put on our best face to Him, and yet He really knows us. Those masks are kind of irrelevant when we stand before God. He really knows you and me. You and I can be changed in a second if we'll just allow the Prince of Peace, if we'll just allow Jesus to change us. One of my favorite passages in the Bible is 1 Corinthians 13, and it says, Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Our our countenance itself can change if we will but let Jesus bring change to us. Would you pray? Close your eyes. Heavenly Father, I pray your Holy Spirit to be released here today. I am sure there are some very confident people here today who are hiding things in their heart, things that only you know. Lord, they put on a good mask and they say, oh, I don't want to dishonor God or whatever, but you really know God and they really know. Lord, I pray that you extend grace and forgiveness. I pray my friends will repent and truly take off the mask before you and be changed in an instant. Would you pray with me out loud together? Dear Jesus, forgive me my sins. Change me. I put my trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, now reveal yourself to my friends. Lord, they have put their faith in you. They want to be changed. May their very countenance, may the very attitude of their hearts be changed as they walk out of here. May they walk out of here with joy and peace despite the circumstances around them because they have been changed by you, the living God, the one whom we celebrate this day. In Jesus' name, amen.